This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. I have been here. The Grey Goose, Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. I only stayed one night at Norman's farm because the old man was evicted the very next day with his daughter Matilda. She told me the story of mortgage and lack of finance and the harsh dealings of the local bigwig, Malcolm Gregory. On the very night after the eviction, Norman's farm was burned down. This was immediately attributed to old man Norman as a reprisal upon the landlord Gregory. I got Charlie Austin down and decided to investigate. Thus, midnight found us among the charred ruins of the farm. From time to time, we were almost terrorized by the dreadful howls that disturbed the night. Suddenly, we came upon the howler himself in the ruins and pinned him down. You're right, Mr. Hicks. He's dumb. Can't speak. Only howl like a... Like a... Like something I've never heard before. All right, Charlie. Let him stand up, poor devil. <laughs> now, you. Can you hear me? Oh, he nods. Now, I, I don't want to hurt you, but I've got to find out why you were howling round these ruins. In fact, what it's all about. Here. He's pointing to that there tin box with the empty cartridges. Give them to him. Crikey. <laughs> Pleased as a kitten. No. Here. Blimey, Mr. Hicks. He's noticed a couple missing. Darn me if he ain't. Don't let him know we have them. <laughs> Lord. It's hopeless to do anything with him. Let him go. <coughs> Caw. Off like a flash of lightning. I thought he'd do that. The poor devil's scared out of his wits. That's if he's got any. I reckon Mr. X that he's cuckoo. Yes, yeah, so do I. But there's some connection between him and the burning of this farm. Charlie, let's go. Late as it is, I'll have to find Tilda Norman and see if she knows anything. I'm sorry to disturb you at such a late hour, Tilda, but Charlie Austin and myself have just been to the ruins of your farm. Whatever for? <laughs> Could be curiosity, if you like. But we were under the impression that there's something rotten in the state of Denmark, as it were. And so we've come to you for a little information. Oh, you're very kind to try and help, but everybody seems to think Father fired the farm to spite Gregory. Yes, that's so. Uh, does your father have a 12 bore? Of course. I don't know a farmer who hasn't a shotgun. Do you know what make of cartridges he uses? Yes, I buy them for him. They're mare, yellow brand. Fine. Oh, extra fine. Charlie, what have you got? The one we brought away from the farm. Uh, mine's a uh, sharp fire. So it is. I suppose you wouldn't know, Tilda, what this sharp fire brand of cartridge would be doing in a tin box in the ruins of your father's farm. I haven't an idea. Ah, I didn't think you would. Now, here's the major quiz question of the night. Can you tell me how this whole village sleeps while the night is made hideous with unearthly howls? Oh, that. Well, we're, we've all got used to Josh, I suppose. Josh? A, a sort of gypsy type? Yes. As a matter of fact, he is a gypsy. Poor soul, he's very much wanting, as they say. Mm -hmm. A half-wit and dumb completely. Actually, he was only a little kid when his tribe came here. When their caravans moved on, he was found deserted. Oh, why? Oh, it's a gypsy custom. They believe implicitly in the evil eye. In their opinion, I suppose, the little chap had been eyed. Hence his mental affliction and his dumbness. In such cases, the gypsies always cast them out of the tribe. Uh, where does he live? Uh, who looks after him? No one exactly. But strangely enough, he's attached himself to Morton Hamley, Gregory's place. He adores Malcolm Gregory. Hmm, is that so? You seem very interested. Why, well, I am. Oh, yes, very definitely. Why do you think an old curmudgeon like Gregory would tolerate a half-wit round the place? <laughs> I can't say. But that's been the situation for over 16 years. Now tell me, why does this poor wretch howl around the place like a rattled banshee? Have you forgotten, Mr. Fletcher? Tonight was a full moon. The mentally afflicted... Good heavens, yes! 
So that's Josh, eh? Well, thanks indeed, Tilda. By the way, I have a bit of good news for you. Yes? Your bail endeavours bore fruit. They release your dad in the morning. Oh, isn't that good? Another thing. There will be no case of arson brought against him. How do you know? <laughs> Never mind how I know. But I didn't get you up in the middle of the night just for gossip. Now, you go back to bed, sleep tight, and don't worry. What do you know? Never you mind just yet. You just believe what I tell you. Somehow I do. That's the girl. Now, Charlie, we'll go over to our own righteous, though lonely couches. Good night, Hilda. Good night. Oh, Crocky. After being haunted all this night, I can do with some shut-eye. Shut-eye nothing. You're coming for a walk with me. Oh, where to at one o'clock in the morning? To Morton Hamley, the country residence of one Malcolm Gregory. One of a list of 40 thieves I may have previously mentioned to you. Ready? Aye, aye. Ready and unwilling. <laughs> Laid on, Mr. Hex. Blooming dark near the moon's down. All the better. We may be spared the howls of that Josh bloke. Well, that's one comfort among so few, ain't it? Now, inside the gate. I hope he doesn't squeak. Make for the lawn. Keep off the gravel drive. Do you think anybody will be up? I'm certain of it. I'm certain Mr. Gregory will be up, and I'm equally certain he'll be entertaining a visitor. Who? Our poor dumb bloke, Josh. You see, I think Josh has been sent on an errand tonight, and to the best of his limited intelligence, he'll try and impart the result. Come on. Yes, it's a light. But the window's tight shut. Dash it. Can't hear a word. But you can see all right. Yes. Yes, you're right, Mr. Hex. There's that Joss bloke. And the elderly gentleman is obviously our friend Gregory. The gypsy looks a bit scared. He is, too. The old man's in a tearing rage about something. Crikey. He cracked him one. Well, I'd like to see him do that to me. The brute. Like thrashing a dog. That poor half-wit hasn't the sense to hit back either. Yet he's about two stone heavier. There he goes again. Here. What say we bust the window in and dong the old un? Oh, just one. Not yet. By Jove, I've got it. My guess was right. Look. Look on the table, Charlie. My Lord. Our tin box and a few loose cartridges. Exactly. You've got one in your pocket still? Yeah, a sharp fire. So have I. Can you see the idea yet? Oh, blowed if I can. Well, I'll tell you this much. You can guess the rest. The old man is tearing mad because you and I have got two of his cartridges. Well, what's that got to do with it? He doesn't know we've got them. True, but he's too short, and that's putting him in a panic. He's beating Christmas out of that poor beggar. Here, here, let's do something. Right. Now, you shove your elbow through the glass when I say go. Right, elbow through glass. Yes. Afterwards, duck back behind the hedge and leave the rest to me. Ready? Aye, aye, ready. I've an idea that Josh might make a run for it when we break the window. You collar him and hold on to him out here. Right. Now, ready? Yeah. Here we go. What the devil is that? Hey, come back, you crazy fool. It's no good yelling for that poor wretch, Mr. Gregory. He's in good hands. Who are you? What do you mean by smashing my window, breaking into my house? I actually didn't break your window. And so far, I haven't put a foot into your house. Then don't. I've no intention of doing so yet. I'm under the impression, however, you will invite me in before long. I don't invite thieves or burglars whom I can't even see into my study. What do you want? Who are you? Second question first. Who am I? Definitely not a burglar. Although there is every chance I might shortly help myself to something. That, of course, answers in part your first question. If you don't quickly answer me, I'll put a shot into you. What? From empty, sharp fire cartridges, Gregory? What do you mean? They're on your table for all the world to see. By the way, here's a present for you. Another empty cartridge case. That accounts for one of the missing two, doesn't it? Where did you get this? I'll tell you when you ask me in. What about it? Come in and be damned to you. Thank you. Permit me to arrange the matter of a mask over my face. A shame, eh? No, just a little bashful. Now I shall accept your kind invitation. Where did you get that cartridge? You shouldn't ask stupid questions, Gregory. You know perfectly well where I got it. And I witnessed your beastly attack on that poor wretch because he was only able to produce a number too short of what you expected. Where's the other one? Uh-oh. That's going too far and too fast. Look, you don't fence with me. 
I'm a dangerous man when I'm crossed. So am I. And strangely enough, I always win. Who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. You asked me that before, haven't you? Yes. Well, who are you? Permit me to present my card. Good heavens. A feather? Pardon me. A grey goose feather. And you're this disreputable rogue, vagabond thief everybody's looking for. And you, oh lucky you, have found him. Your trouble, Malcolm Gregory, is that you can't do a thing about it. So now let's shut up and get down to brass tacks. Where's that other cartridge? I, I... You'll do nothing. Listen to me, you idiot. You fired Norman's farm. Liar. Oh, ooh, such language. You did, and I'll tell you how you did it. I'll tell you you're crazy. No. You're mixing me up with poor Josh. You discovered, among other of his failings, he's a pyromaniac. Maniac, yes. Pyromaniac, I said. Or if you aren't acquainted with the word, a firebug. You dirty low hound. You used that poor idiot to burn that farm down and allowed everyone in the village to think old man Norman did it himself. So he did. Shut up. He'd as soon cut his throat as destroy the thing he loved most. Mr. Gregory, anent Norman's farm, I have other theories. Theories, theories, a fig for them. And look here. You'll be in the county jail yourself tomorrow. No. Kindly hand me the key of your safe. I'll see you in Hades first. Ooh, must you talk of such a place? Remember, I just mentioned firebugs. <laughs> Gregory, the key of that safe in exchange for that missing cartridge. Well, is it a deal? Mm. All right. Here's the key. Right. Thank you. All right. Come in, Charlie, and bring Josh with you. The ways of Roland Fletcher are mostly subtle, but he's never wedded them to practice so ably as on this adventure. Don't miss the climax of this story in the next episode of The Grey Goose. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.